So good afternoon. Um, as Alex mentioned, my name's Andrew Spencer. I'm the CEO of Australian Pork Limited. I'm going to talk to you about investing in pork industry growth in Australia. It's not the type of investment you might be expecting, but for our industry, it's been a very important and valuable investment in change. It's been a journey and it continues to be a journey a bit like the winding Australian road you see here. There's always dangers of going off on the corners. Um, we're slowly finding our way, but we're very aware of those dangers as they persist. And I want to start by looking back uh, when I presented a couple of years ago at Outlook. I'll just go back one. The, the pork industry was under attack. Our pig farms were being raided in the dead of night and campaigns were being run around the evils of so-called factory farming. Illegally obtained videos uh, were confronting our farmers across the country and they were placing our industry at the centre of a battle between perception and reality. And some of this is still happening today and it's even still happening in recent days. At that time, our industry was rapidly changing and it still is rapidly changing. We, we had to change uh, to meet these challenges and change is one of the only things that we expect to be constant into the future. Challenges are not something foreign to the Australian pork industry. We're one of the few agricultural sectors that competes in our own market with imports. And the amount of imported pork coming into this country today means that about 45% of all of the pork that we consume comes from pigs produced on the other side of the world. Retailers, they're in a never ending pursuit of differentiation and the imposition of production conditions through private standards placing demands for change on our producers is now standard practice. Consumers, consumers want to eat meat in the main but they don't want to know too much about how it got onto their plate. They do want to be secure in the knowledge that good and responsible people did the right thing in getting that meat there. And it's my industry's responsibility as well as other people in this room to do exactly that. Activists, largely motivated through a vegan philosophy, don't want any exploitation of animals and they challenge the very existence of our industry. So all of this adds up to a hell of a lot of interest in, in what we do, and that's at many different levels. Ultimately, whether an, an individual consumes pork or not, they still want to know that we look after our animals, that we care for the environment, basically that we do the right thing along the way. And we need to be able to take the lead and tell our story about how that happens and not leave a vacuum for others to fill. And for the Australian pork industry, this is a work in progress. Our history of intense competition uh, through being truly exposed to global markets has built an attitude within the Australian pork industry that we have no God-given right to exist. And we understand and recognise this and it reflects itself in many of the activities that the industry gets involved in. And additionally, we're acutely aware, of course, that the future strength and profitability of our industry depends on meeting these challenges. So the way that we're trying to do that is through constant change and adaptation. And this can be expressed under three distinct categories, people, pigs and pork, and I'll talk about them briefly. Firstly, people, in particular pig farmers. Our organisation has worked very hard at and been able to develop open, honest and frank relationships with our pig farmers. And to their great credit, our producers have made big decisions and invested personal and financial capital in adapting to change and they're going to need to continue to do that. So how have pig farmers changed? Over the last 10 years, we've, we've moved from growing pigs to producing food in the form of pork. And there's only a subtle difference in the words but they hide a major attitudinal shift with significant consequences on Australian pig farms. It's a fact of life that we in Australia are never going to be the world's lowest cost pork producer. So our pork has to be worth the premium it attracts. 
And our product integrity system is one way that we're able to achieve this. The system includes three components, namely APIC, our quality assurance system, PigPass, and FizzyTrace. APIC is our quality assurance system with modules covering the mandatory food safety verification, but also best management practice, biosecurity, animal welfare, environmental impact. It's a very robust system. It stands up really well against other agricultural sectors. It has annual independent audits. And over 90% of the pork produced in Australia comes from properties that are certified under APIC. Pig Pass is our pork version of the National Livestock Identification System. It tracks pig movements noting where they've come from, where they're going, when that happened, and how many pigs are in, in that um, consignment. Scale that information up to the totality of the Australian pork industry, and Pig Pass provides us with an enormous base of information to manage an emergency de disease outbreak, which is its primary objective, but it also gives us a compelling understanding of how pig, pig trading works, right down to the producer by producer or the processor by processor level. Oops. Fizzy Trace is our product traceback tool. If you were to go shopping at Woolworths, buy a pork cutlet, take the packaging off, give me a piece of the meat, I can send that to a lab and in 24 hours I will tell you which Australian pig farm that it came from. So it's a technology that we discovered here. It was um, introduced for the pork industry with support from Australian Pork Limited, and it is totally unique to the Australian pork industry. Some other agricultural sectors are now picking it up. It's a uh, trace elemental based profiling, and it's extremely accurate. It's been used in courts of law. So I combine these three technologies, and uh, our industry has enormous capability, particularly around verification of product claims, for example, around production systems such as free range or sow stall free, or the provenance of products, country of origin, uh, or did it come from a particular area from a particular pig farm. So the point I'm trying to make, Australia's pork producers have evolved over the last years, not away from their farms, but definitely towards a better understanding and meeting the needs of the consumer. And we see our ability to be able to continue to do this as a core competence uh, that we try and achieve more quickly than other protein industries and the international pork exporters that we compete with here. Secondly, pigs. What's changed for our pigs? In 2010, our producers decided to invest something around $50 million in making changes on their farms to take away the sow stalls, those small, tight, individual pens for sows, and put the sows into what we call loose housing. And thus, Australian pigs now lead the world in how they're housed, thanks to, million, to, to millions of dollars that we've spent on research and development on this particular subject. More than 70% of Australian pregnant sows are now spending more than 90% of their pregnancies in this loose housing. And we're aiming over the next couple of years for the whole industry to be able to meet that standard. And it's worth noting that of the $10 million worth of imported pork arriving on Australia's shores every week, that all of it comes from countries with the exception of one country, which is the Netherlands, and a small proportion. All of it comes from countries that are still using sow stalls. So the, the health, the wellbeing, and the ultimate productivity of our pigs is critical, and we continue to find new ways to improve and to do it better than our competitors. Thirdly, pork. How has our pork changed? Our product integrity system that I've already described means that we know today more about our pork products, where they come from, how they've been produced, than at any other time in the industry's history. And we also know more about what makes a great eating experience, how to replicate that experience consistently, and how to build a platform on our pig farms for achieving it. Our Eating Quality Pathways project has identified the key inputs on this slide to more enjoyable pork, and ultimately we plan to have these conditions built into a module of APIC, our quality assurance system. And what's changed with respect to our relationship with the consumer? 
The past five years has seen us be able to engage with consumers in a way that's developed a more distinctive image for pork. It's given it a higher awareness of a, its centre of plate status as an alternative, and it's en emphasised some specific health attributes. And our slightly cheeky pork tim advertising campaign has successfully increased the recognition of pork as a real option. I'm going to press this button now and um, just remind the technician I need a bit of sound because it's, it's one of these ads. Uh, it's finished. Hold on. Can you go back to the start of that one? Hello. Mm, you know she poked him. Really? She poked the whole neighbourhood. An authentic Italian spag bowl tastes better with pork. Doesn't really work without the visuals. <laughs> In fact, it's much worse without the visuals. <laughs> So to really impress, get some pork on your fork. So we'll just accept that as a Murphy and uh, technology failure. So people, pigs and pork, where does that take us? The town's a bit corny, but it, for our industry, we like to think it adds up to some pride. Pride in our people, pride in our pigs, and pride in our pork. And very often in agriculture, we, we become defensive, we become slightly evasive, we even sometimes become a bit apologetic about what we do. And it shouldn't have to be that way. We should be comfortable with anyone choosing, in my case, choosing to take a look at our world, coming onto a pig farm unannounced, checking it out, looking around and being satisfied or even impressed with what they're seeing. And so pride is reflected in how we aspire as an industry to be more transparent, for the community to want, if they want to know about us, to be able to find out. An industry that's not afraid of others seeing what we do and in fact is proud to show it off to those who care to take a look. And so that's the ultimate in community transparency. As an industry we're working on it. It's fair to say that we're not there yet, absolutely, and we've got a lot of work still to do, but it certainly is a track that we've decided to take uh, and we believe it's highly uh, integral to our future success. So. Are the changes that we're making as an industry leading to us meeting these various challenges? And what's the actual health of our industry? The, nu the numbers speak for themselves a bit, so you can have a look at some of those. Um, our industry has shown consistent growth since 2010 in terms of consumption, as shown on this graph, but also prices. Uh, these are peak prices ex farm gate. In more recent times, I think everyone here has heard it 16 times at least today, that there's a shortage of beef. And the serendipity of that shortage is only exacerbating this longer term trend for our industry. These strong demand increases over time have been realised through both price and volume, adding up to value. Um, and that of course has also meant some well earned profitability for our producers. So what's next for our industry? Look to our north. China is a nation that produces and consumes around half of all the world's pork. They've got a huge and growing middle class looking for higher protein consumption every year and pork is their protein of choice. Their pork industry, however, is in a major transition period where they're moving from backyard production to a more modern day intensive system which is affecting the stability of their, their um, available volumes. And they've also got significant concerns around their food safety systems, across the board for pork as well as for many other food commodities. And in this scenario, Australia offers some very attractive options. We've got a modern pork industry. We've got some of the globally leading edge technologies around product integrity. We've got a second to none food safety uh, record and reputation. And our consumer research in China indicates that their attitude to food production in Australia is extremely complementary. So all of the dominoes line up in a very positive way for a future business in China, um, but it's not going to be that easy for us. We don't trade in pork today with China, and the reason is that we have no trade protocols negotiated. Getting that job done is quite a, a deal, as the beef industry guys already know. 
um, and it shouldn't be underestimated, it will take us many years. So that's just a bit of our story. Our industry's made some major investments in change. We're going to continue to do that. We believe we have to to remain competitive. We're a different industry to what we were five years ago. We're going to be a very different industry in another five years. Um, addressing challenges is a journey. It's not a destination. And it'll continue to keep us very busy. So thanks for your attention. Thank you.